Hello everyone. It's uh, always great to come to you from the beautiful town of Port Charlotte, Florida. Yep. We have some guests from their South Londoners. <laughs> <laughs> Here are my friends. They've done well on the program. Uh, they're helping others get well. They're going to be sitting in on this uh, YouTube video and helping us talk about some of these cases. Uh, we're going to give a little shout out though to uh, Jiva. 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 And I got to get that down. Now, I'm an old country boy. All right. Sounds good. Now, this is a lady that's done really well on herself. She had uh, stomach cancer and the lining, right? And she has now. Right? And she has now, and she's almost got it gone. She's real close to getting that gone. The daughter is um, Sasha. Sasha. Uh, and you guys have done well. From what I'm hearing from your, uh, your uh, teacher here, you're doing really well. Uh, you keep on going, you get that out of there, you get on fruits, you get that lymph moving, you get your kidneys filtering and all that, sweetheart. You're doing well. Get that stomach cancer all out and you're done. Get all that lymph moving there, rebuild the tissues and you're good. So you're doing well. I'm real proud of you. I mean, that's what it takes. She's a GP. So it, it's a lot for a GP to take on something like this and I, I'm real proud of you. To be honest with you, what you're telling me about her, that's really good. You guys have done well. Good job. And this is from Karen, huh? Karen Noble. Karen Noble. That is very noble. It is, right? it is noble. Detox client of Morocco. That's pretty cool. Please convey my warmest admiration and appreciation to the doc. Well, I'm going to reverse that back to you, Karen. Thank you, sweetheart. I'm on the same pedigree as him, 67 years, uh, having spent my life progressing from meat, dairy, uh, mega eating to virtual fruititarian. I like this lady already. Absolutely. Right. Well, you know what? It's just these are spiritual people we're all coming in contact with. And we talked about that at the class. You know, spirituality is essential right now. The mind is so dominated that you see the product of the mind. Now, the product of love and consciousness, and that's what we're bringing in. And, and so, real, real proud to work with all of you guys. Really, really fun stuff. I had fun at school. You know, it's our first, second, uh, that level of level two. And I had a lot of fun with you guys. You guys were good, you know. There's, there's so many things. You just can't. When you think you're going to get all this covered in a class, you just never do because there's just so much, you know. Mention also to him the fact that my raw food body rejected the dental implants after five years. Don't tell me that. Had to have them ripped out. Oh, she's a bingo. Don't tell me that. I've got a bunch of dental implants. Oh yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah, not good. I got about ten dental implants. Not, uh, not one to hear that too much, Karen. I'm trying to keep my detox civilized because I'm popping stones. Yeah, you know, I mean, you, you, it's, it's going to clean you. <laughs> you got to be prepared for that. That's right. <laughs> that is my message to him. He's the oh, thanks, sweetheart. A little poem for him. Oh, look at that. One impulse from a vernacular word will teach you more of man, a moral evil of good than all the sages can. Sweet is the lore that nature brings. Our uh, meddling intellect misshapes the beauteous, beauteous, beauteous forms, of forms of things. We murder, we dissect. No kidding. The human nature, and then I say you hate to call it the human nature. It's just it's unconsciousness, and it's it's that you when, when you're that unconscious, the ego is strong, everything's strong, and then uh, you you try to dominate on others. Marco had a great trip, and I'll look forward to hearing about it all when you return, Karen. Well, Marco, Debbie, you are doing really good. I love you guys. You're doing so good on it. You want that back? Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Look, and I want to thank you all for the gifts at class. I mean, I ate uh, big mango. mango from oh, that was Pine so Island. Pine Island. They took off from a bunch of them, went down to Pine Island. That's where Jensen used to come. Pine Island is the north side of Fort Myers. The mango. So you see how big the one I got? Uh, melons back in the UK. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Well, they've got mangoes this big. Mangoes. I mean, it's just unbelievable type of good food there. But they're not ripe until May and June. Now, he was able to bring some, uh, uh, that mango back, and it, it took a couple days. But So they probably still have good mangoes down there. I love this one, <laughs> even though I'm not, sh you know, I, I, I couldn't swear that's the case, but uh, karma's a bitch, go vegan. <laughs>
it, it's enough to say that meat's dirty, that's for sure. So we want to thank you a lot for all that, guys. Uh, appreciate you all coming to the class. It was fun. We had about 80, I think, totally. It was just fun stuff. And, uh, you know, when it comes down to the cases and it comes down to, you know, really working them, you guys are getting it real well. You guys are done so well. And look how simple it is. Healing is so simple. And you got this one lady, you got her stomach cancer coming out of her. And, I mean, this is just how it is. And I just, uh, the more that we can all do this, and maybe she is a practitioner of the healing arts, will then take this on for her patients. And you, know, you know, she's uh, she told us that she's actually, she's documenting everything. Yeah, good. And she wants to put it in a book. Well, she should. She's done, yeah. She should, because I'm going to tell you, this world needs to know that there's faith. There, it's not just faith, that there that you can... Uh, 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 overcome these type of advanced acid conditions. Uh, and uh, we've done it for years. Matter of fact, with the stomach cancers, I just can't remember losing one. If we did, it was for some gnarly reason other than our own. Um, so it did real well. All you guys, uh, I heard all stories at the class, and all you, Shane, all you guys there healing these people. Yeah. So you guys, just great, great. Welcome. It was an amazing, it was an amazing experience. It was fun, 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 fun. Well, let's take off one down these. This is how many requests we got during class one week. It is incredible, you know, but there's a lot of hurting people out there, and we are the ones to, that come out and help them, and I, I just love you all for coming and helping me do this. Let me see. This is not a member. Who is this? I don't know. Uh, Mama. Oh, no. That's yeah. Your Mama. Oh, I don't know. Hi. My son's hernia was spotted four days ago. It's at the end of his stomach, uh, two small lumps, one on each side. He now wears a two-sided belt after visiting the family physician. He is very skinny, thin skin, and hair. So what's the first thing we're going to think about when we think of herniations, uh, uh, thin, thin skin, um, um, things like that? Now, we know skinny. Is definitely malabsorbed. Mm -hmm. So we know that lymphatically speaking, this lad is um, malabsorbed, right? Mm -hmm. But we also know that with, this, with, with herniations, we have some connective tissue problems. So we know that you can have a genetic weakness in an area like that and have a herniation from that weakness, but that weakness originated from someone that has a parathyroid weakness. So you have to go back and fix this young man's parathyroid gland. And I would do a parathyroid formula, add some bones with that. So you got some herbs that are directive and high in calcium. And then, of course, with that, you've got the kelp with the high iodine, which trips up the thyroid and parathyroid. So you're going to go down that road. He's got this uh, type of scoliosis. And uh, again, this is um, uh, whenever you're not utilizing calcium, as your years go on and the more acidic and the more you lose your kidney filtrations, the more you lose connective tissue and bone. And then your back twists, everything twists and turns, you know, I mean, it's just, just how it is. That caused shortening of the right, oh, caused shortening of the right leg, very common. His body leans to the left. Now, you remember that case we showed you up on YouTube? His name was Roger, he was in a chair, he's a yeah, quad, yeah, yeah. and his leg. Straightened up. Yeah, two inches shorter. Matter of fact, the x-rays are sitting over there. And his legs were two, this right leg was two inches shorter than the left. And he had his upper femur in a bent at a 28 degree angle. You could see it. 11th month, that one night, his leg just, it just pulls the femur. It pulls it, it pulls it straight. Where did that kind of power come in at? Well, we've seen that, not just with him, like it's a miracle thing. We've seen it in many others, where at a certain level of this, and your body starts realigning itself. I mean, that's, that's pretty freaky, but you, it's understandable totally when you understand how, the, you remember we, we laid out yeah, it's the guidance. It's freaky, yet it's normal, isn't it? It is normal. What, what we assume is freaky, it is as normal as can be. The yeah. body likes to be well and healthy, and I just love that. just love that sort of thinking there. And the same thing with this lad. You get up there because you're in a process of cleaning out all the acids and the mucus and all the foreign chemistry you put in, and maybe neurotoxins and things like that. But then you're also rebuilding. And that's the, that's the thing. And obviously you have to clean to rebuild. You've got to remove acidosis to rebuild. Acids de dictate deterioration. So 
Right, let me see. Right eye was up while the other further down. So again, he's got a lot of connective tissue and suggesting maybe even neurological weaknesses here. We'll see as we go on here. Uh, not anymore. Maybe due to his large consumption of fruit, <laughs> veggie juices with some pulp. His face and eyes are level now, but not his body. Keep going. See that? Level that. Keep going, Mom. This is good stuff. This is good stuff. His face and eyes are level now, but not his body, which uh, remained uh, uneven due to his uh, uh, high phone. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, you Yeah, right. right. But it's a type I've just never run. No. His upper uh, teeth grew randomly, and some continue to grow. Late development, maybe. Okay. So we know that up here, it's possible he has a pituitary weakness of suppressing growth. We know the parathyroid for sure with the teeth and all this. So he hasn't had enough calcium to get proper growth uh, 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 of those type of tissues. So this is where we're going to go back. We're going to fix his parathyroid gland. We might do one bottle of pituitary. That'd be one and one, one pill twice a day uh, for one bottle only, just to kick that up. And I would actually do the parathyroid with the pituitary because we want to shove that in. We want to get that body started to utilizing calcium. Obviously, his body is starting to correct itself, so it's just a matter of time for it to work down the rest of the body. Pretty cool stuff here. Uh, late development maybe looks like a young teen. He is well balanced with uh, epileptic medicines for many years. He suffers from C mental uh, disabilities due to vaccines. Yeah, I mean, there's that classic vaccination. And I, I just, when I see medical doctors get up on the news and things and push people to do vaccines, I want to throw up. There, there, were, there was one this morning, did you see on the news? No. They were saying that your babies, your babe, your children, your babies are the source of diseases. Ow! So you need to get back. And they were like listing hepatitis. Oh, they were my listing, God. And the symptoms. They're, they're mad now. Yeah. They're going freaking yeah, mad. I mean, this is insane stuff. Look at that. On ABC this morning. Well, all you spiritual people, keep yourself grounded because it sounds like the rest of the world is going literally mad. This is insane. Uh, so you want to get upstairs with upper circulation and brain and nerve no matter what. You know, because no matter what, you want to get up into the glands, you want to get up in the pituitary, you want to get up in the central nervous system. You want to turn everything on. So you bring more oxygenated blood up into the head, and that's upper circulation. The brain and nerve number two is an electrical neural turner on her. You know, so it's just that it'll start turning him on that way. Pulling out any acids and, and getting the adrenals. Here's another thing with epilepsy or any type of seizures and stuff is getting the adrenals balanced because they deal with mineral utilization. Sometimes if you're low in manganese or, or magnesium, you could seize. But also the calcium factor. You'll get cramps, cramps and, and epilepsy and all that with low calcium. So this is a big deal about the parathyroid and, uh, and this calcium all the way from the epileptic uh, stuff, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, vaccines, neurotoxin, you have to detox them out. There's only one way, only one way with that. Um, uh, due to my own research, according to my own research, well, they won't tell you, will they? No, they won't tell you, you know, but it's there. And <clears throat> when you have, let's say, 10,000 parents that noticed immediately after a vaccine symptomology happening, whether it's went into se direct in, directly into seizures or went into the starting of ADD where neurological hyperactivity. I can't tell you how thousands of cases that have told me immediately afterwards. That's when you've got 10,000 people in a court of law testifying immediately afterwards, we also know for a fact that mercury is a neurotoxin. I don't see how, unless you have a corrupt judge or a jury that's been tainted, wouldn't, wouldn't vote on your side. Well, that's what happened to me. It was a polio vaccine. And how, yeah, yeah, how, how, how different things were God. in 1966, because that's when, uh, mm -hmm. three months old, my, my mother said, as soon as I had the vaccine, I came home, I went as stiff as a board, and I've never yeah. been the same. But isn't it interesting how then, in 1966, the hospital acknowledged it. And they were like, okay, we'll help you sue the doctor, we'll have all of this, and then the doctor died in the process. And, yeah, I remember you telling that. Yeah. And the thing is, is polio was live vaccine in the 60s. And it's still, they still claim they use some live vaccines. Dead or live, what the well, hell? They, they changed the name, didn't they? They did, they changed it to meningitis. Uh, that's what, At least that's what uh, Horowitz claims. Uh, but he did a lot of research. And I tell you, if I have to believe anyone, I'm going to believe Hor Dr. Horowitz over, over them by far. Because this escaped us under the rug. But instead of 
discontinuing it. They're promoting it. And, and this is the thing that, that shows you how negative they've slipped into. Because when, you're, when you see babies going into seizures and ADD from your product, and you, and you don't do anything about it but promote more use of it, that's evil. That's criminal, that's evil, and that's what's going on. Even this uh, lady, the, uh, Dr. Tenpenny, that wrote a, has a video out on, on vaccines. I brought that yes. to show you guys. She's just saying that a lot of the CDC centers did not let medical doctors see the true findings. And she claims a lot of the medical doctors were lied to by the CDC centers. That's serious stuff here. And I just, uh, and it could be why there's some medical doctors that their ignorance is, is, is understandable because of that. Uh, but when you see, it's like chemotherapy. When you see most of your clients dying from chemo, and in these uh, these research groups where they use experimental chemo, mostly kills everybody in them. Of course. Uh, so, no one ever talks about those. Yeah. No, no. Amazing stuff here. Amazing stuff. This poor lad here. Uh, there's no name to his condition. <laughs> His right back uh, hand is swollen in various amounts in the past two years. So what's that? That's lymphatics. So you know he's got kidney failure problems. He's not filtering properly. All of that, which implies the neurotoxic effects of a vaccine, of course, which says that there was already a little bit of a neural weakness, right? So what gland has to be down to have a neural weakness like that? The adrenals. And that's just what this lad had. You can tell it here, the swelling, the lymph problems, the kidney. So you can tell that he already had a little bit of a weak neurological system. Right. And then when you just throw in the vaccines and the stuff, you're, you're, you're taken off of that. It sounds like the parathyroid and pituitary is probably genetic past there. Just enough to really send this person into some serious uh, uh, mutations of, of, uh, of development there with a, with a pituitary there. What can I give him for his hernia? Again, Parathyroid, uh, bones formula, two, three times a day is what I would do for me. Uh, the parathyroid, I'd probably do one, three times a day. I'd hit the pituitary formula, one bottle. I'd probably only do two bottles of parathyroid. Take a look, see if the fingernails are straightening and everything else. You need to clean that sinus out. You need to detox, clean the bowels up and clean the sinuses up because you need to get these neural toxins out of him because you want to go after the epilepsy. You want to go after that, the reason he's having that. And then you're going back to neurotoxicity because you know immediately it was from the vaccine, so you know it's neurotoxicity. But you also know that he probably had the nerve rings in the eyes. The myelin sheets were weak already, so that just made that neurotoxin just go right in and slam him down. like you. So, you know, you got to go back and fix those things. Also, food-wise, fruits, berries, and melons, period. Fruits, berries, and melons, period. Uh, currently, because you're talking about serious stuff here. I would think just the epilepsy alone would be serious enough for someone to say, let's go, right? Because you never know what that can lead to. What can I give? Okay, let me see here. He's currently eating mostly raw, drinking carrot, apple juice. Change, get rid of the carrot, make it green drinks. If you're going to do veggie juices, get rid of the carrot. It's a starchy veggie, has no power to it. We all fell prey to that back in the 70s. And I can tell you, you want more power, get to the fruits, berries, and melons. That's neural power. Now you're playing around with more physical power. You want neural power. You're going to go to your fruits, berries, and melons. Uh, fennel, small doses of ginger and turmeric, pineapple, avocado, prunes, sweet pea, and more. Grapes, apples, oranges, uh, 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 mangoes, whatever you can find in that order. I would go more that way. Blackberries, blueberries, things like that. Uh, and you might want to do some greens because of the hernia. It'll just get some calcium, a little, a little more of calcium. But to tell you, you could just do kelp. But our superfood blend is all you need. High, the high, highest superfood blend in calcium. Never, never seen a superfood blend high in calcium like that. So it, that's adequate. You don't have to go to so much trouble. He refuses melons and berries aside from watermelon juice when in season, summer. His elimination is not fluffy and soft, but small round pieces. Well, it sounds like he has a neurological, you know, yeah, affecting peristalsis and everything else. So you're just pooping balls. And uh, doing a lot of juices. Uh, so eat a lot of fruit. I'd be, try to have him eat a lot of fruit. Get some fruit fiber in there, too. Got to get on the bowel formula. You want If you can afford to do the 14-week protocol, that is designed for everything that I can think of. Uh, with the exception, I would add brain and nerve early on. Add it early on. I would do the parathyroid pituitary early on, right off. You know, let's get this guy going here. Uh, sometimes dry and sometimes... Uh, Dump or clump together to a pretty large. Uh, 
Done. No mucus on it, as far as I can see, and there should be mucus in his stools. So his body's just still kind of holding everything. Keep working him to open, to open, to open, and release. And he probably needs to do some releasing exercises, too. Now he's having some difficulty. How to heal his hernia, what to feed him, what not. Thank you so much. Fruits and, fruits and melons and whatever he'll do in the berry side of that. Uh, if you're going to do the greens, you want to make it uh, positive for urinary tract. So you're always doing the dandelion greens and you're always doing the parsleys and maybe even the cilantro and stuff. Anything else, you can add spinaches and any cucumbers and anything else in there for taste if you want. But that's what I would do in that case. Any suggestions? Anything you want to add to that? No, the, as you said, though, the diet can shift. I know, I know she said he was refusing, but can shift more, yeah. I think like she said chicory or something, but away from that and carrots. Yeah, I think away from the carrot juice for sure. Carrots are very starchy. Anything that grows below the ground, Fennel. guys, is starchy. Fennel. And it's kind of like uh, um, the difference between, let's say, a legume like peanuts. Very starchy. Anything that grows on or near the ground like that or under the ground, very starchy stuff. But, but you, you know, you can, um, if he's refusing or if he's having problems with it, you can... You can do the stuff he likes later on in the evening, which is when probably he's going to want that kind of stuff more, night, and then yeah. and then fruits during the day, and then slowly make that evening window smaller. Yeah, I can. Yeah, definitely. And just keep making it smaller. Yeah. Because uh, you know, having these type of seizure type things, I, I just I don't like any of that kind of stuff. And it sounds like that his poor body, you know, really parathyroid big time, you know, affecting structure and everything. And that's the thing. As, as we lose our parathyroids in life, we're going to see small structures. Look at women's pelvic areas. They used to just squat in a field. Now they're so small, C-sections are the end thing. You know, they just not, they did, man's losing his bone mass and everything. But you can see why, you know. Uh, abdominal pain, okay. Hey there, my name is Brian. I love your videos. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it, man. Really do. I really do hope to study the same things you uh, do are plus more one day. It intrigues me. I'm hoping you do too, because the whole the whole reason for me doing this whole thing is to turn you guys on, get you guys out of wheelchairs, and turn everybody on to their wellness. And I hope you do more and better, because I'm just a ground setter, you know. It's always the next generation that takes it, and it takes it deeper. But look at how many young people are involved with us now. Those are the brains. Those are the smart ones. They're gonna. They're. There's some already that's incredible. So I'm just. I'm amazed at you guys, and I think that that you're, that's what's going to take place. The Bryans of the world are going to take it and grow and Brian, dig more into it. Brian, don't don't wait. Don't, don't don't do it one day. Do it now. Yeah, do it now. I like your thinking. Yep. I have a question about running and pain. I experience abdominal pain whenever I run longer than five, 10 to 15 minutes and usually have to stop right then and there. It's like I can feel the food knocking back and forth inside of me. Wow. Now, I am a 100% raw fruititarian. No kidding. Brian, I love you, man. And I follow combining rules 100% on point. Calories are 100% on point. Time between meals and running 100% on point. Uh, plus, try different times like one hour before, two hours before, 30 minutes before running, etc. And it still hurts. I don't think it's about what you're eating. I think it's about your body. You know, when you kick up exercise, you're kicking up the need for blood and oxygen. You know, blood and then oxygen and, and all the goodies. At the same time, you know, you're moving things more. Cells are increasing their performance, therefore they're pooping more. You eat more, you poop more. You know what I mean? So that, that's kind of what's going on. But what's happening in, in a stagnant system where you're running, and this is why we use the big word rest, in a stagnant system, uh, you're going to create more acidosis. So those areas that are weak, that are already highly inflamed, you're going to feel them. You're stressing them. That's why I say fix yourself before you do too much strenuous exercises because the hips, the knees, you're going to feel those, you're going to feel the bowels. This is probably colon related to tell you the truth. I mean, that's more time, I'm guessing, but a picture of your eyes would probably be more appropriate to see, but most people have trouble with their bowels. 
in terms of pains like that, and running and stuff is just really, you know, churning up the acid mix, and, and, and any weaknesses are going to raise their ugly little heads up there. I've had simple asthma. There's nothing simple about asthma. Asthma is the beginning of what's called COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Throw the disease off. It's enough to say the one hallmark factor of asthma, emphysema, and the top chain they actually call, excuse me, COPD, neurological. The adrenals always. So we know already this lad has adrenals and kidneys now. We already know that. So by running, and he's feeling that pain, the question, Brian, are you filtering? And that you want to look at. If you're filtering, that's excellent. Uh, but I'd still suggest you slow up a little bit. Maybe do some castor oil packs over that pain a little bit. Find more precise where that pain is, where we can identify it, and go after that. My guess, colon is a good place to start. Bowels. So I would do the stomach and bowel formula. You'll start cleaning more aggressively. Get your kidneys filtering so when you run and you increase acidosis that you don't feel that. And, of course, when you increase acidosis and you have a weakness, you're going to feel your weakness. Neurologically, you're going to go like this. You're going to feel weaker. You're not going to be able to move more. You know, so power and energy is everything for movement. And if you deplete that and can't rebuild that, then you have, it's like MS or anything else. You can't rebuild. You're, you're too busy just trying to stay balanced there. In my previous years, obviously no longer due to diet, I practiced yoga, kundalini for digestion, uh, and hatha for relaxation. That, yeah, definitely good idea. Definitely good idea. Uh, just a side note on the kundalini, because we had a kundalini instructor at the class. I'll say this, start at the crown chakra and go up. Don't mess with the lower chakras. Uh, you're wasting time, and you don't have to. A little shortcut for you. If you play with the, uh, and you're, you're playing in the lower worlds, start with the crown chakra and go on out. And forget about the lower ones, because when you put attention on something, you ignite it. You, you, make, it, you make it active again. Uh, removing your attention from something is removing the energy to that, that image you created. So that's what you want to do if you want a higher expression. But start with the crown. Don't play with the lower chakras because when you have weak glands and you're moving the kind of the energy up the spine in these, you can you can have some problems. You know, you can you can have some serious problems when you have a highly obstructed gland. Even though you're going from the inner side of life and building it up that way, you still physical is physical and you can really hurt physically when you move the kundalini. It's hard to explain to people, but that that kind of that, that energy that moves up and down the spine, it goes up the crown chakra and out. You can play with that. But uh, you'd be a lot better off hitting from the crown chakra. Well, there's nothing to stop you from doing that. This idea that you have to develop and work with the lower chakras, forget that. You, you're where you want to be in any given moment at any time. and Start where you want to be. But you're the key. You don't have to go chasing kundalinis. You're the kundalini channeler. So it's, it's getting in touch with yourself that's the key. Always. Always, always, always. Okay. Now what do we got here? Nightmares. That's got to be good. I'm not sure who else to ask about this. I think Morse is the only one that can help me figure this out. I've studied nutrition and herbalism for a while now. And I think herbal study is important for the future. If we have them. Because, remember, we're wildcrafting a lot of the herbs out of existence right now. And we need farmers and growers to grow herbs. Because we're just wildcrafting. And like we were talking in class, you know, how... Uh, in the female reproductive formula. I'm losing some really good herbs. False unicorn is an incredible herb, but it's now in the endangered species. And I'm a, uh, you know, I'm a conservationist that way. We're not going to use endangered species, no matter how good they are. You know. It's a, uh, let me see here. Okay, for a while now, and I finally realized my healing has stopped due to emotions. What gland are we on emotions? Adrenals. Adrenals. And that is the gland. Notice that we can use a glandular for the thyroid, the pituitary. We don't need much. For the adrenals, we got 400 milligrams slamming and they still don't turn on. And you know why? Because you have a lot of people with astral karma, emotional karma. And until they let this go, matter of fact, we just had a case earlier. And I, I, she's just sitting on her emotions. Her adrenals look good and everything else, but she's got something in her past that's sitting on her. Blood pressure's real low. And, uh, but her constitution is that of George Burns. Uh, she's really strong. And so, 
Uh, it's got to be, it could be something more etheric, you know, more, something you're hidden, something that maybe you were raped, maybe you were traumatized, maybe you were tortured in a past life. You never let that go, and that's hiding in your beingness, and that's real possible. It's a deep emotion locked inside me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Opening the adrenals is opening that Kundalini from the lower. But if you start with the top, it'll, these, this, these, these, all these chakras will find a balance with that because now you're empowering them from a higher level. You can't overcome the mind with the mind, so to speak, and that's true with every relative body there. Now, it's a deep emotion locked inside of me, and I have no idea how to resolve it. I have nightmares almost every night, and I wake up having panic attacks. Well, we know immediately it's his adrenals. We know his adrenals are really down. And so that's something that uh, you really have to work on. And I definitely jump on those 400 ones and work on that. At the same time, I'm going to learn contemplation. I'm going to learn how to become stronger in self. Depends what your dreams are, what's going on there, uh, what you're working out. But I can tell you that that might be totally connected to his emotions and his, adre- and his adrenals is those nightmares. And what you need to do is power yourself up till you control the nightmare. In other words, you become more self-conscious, more self-conscious, and try to wake yourself up in the nightmare and end it, control it. It's a, it's a little bit of work, and you'll have some restless nights, but you can do it that way. If not, if you have a spiritual guide, call on your spiritual guide or master to help you with that and to deal with that. But there could be a connection between those nightmares and his adrenals, and that's something in his past that's just deep-seated in him, and that needs to come out. And the only way it can come out is if you let go of it. And it's hard to let go of something you don't know you have, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's obvious. That's why you have to work from consciousness. You can't work from that because it can't see itself. Only you can see it. The the emotions can't see itself. Like the mind can't see itself. You think when you're in thought, you can't see yourself in thought because thought has your undivided attention. And so that's when you break that. And Oh, yeah, now I can see and think. You know, I've been thinking too much. That sort of thing. And so that, that's what he's got to do is let this, this negative energy out of there. Probably a past experience. Give it love. Become the power yourself, man. Just become life itself. Be the channel yourself. Spend some time alone. Become strong. Get those adrenals up. That's going to help you a lot. Big time here. The most recent one was an abduction and... Uh, resonance. Resonance? Strange. The only time I have ever slept... Decent is when I was in a relationship. He needs to find a woman. That's all it is. Yeah, I could have been a woman who did it to him. No. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only time, okay, but even then it wasn't enough. My uh, iris clearly show I'm having a consciousness thing going on from 11 all the way to 1. Uh oh. Yeah. You know what? Drain the brain. You've got to get the bowels cleaned up and get the sinus and drain all this stuff out of here because all these acids are irritating the nervous system and that could even trip you into some nightmares, you know, that way. But I think there's something deeper going. I think he's sensing that. There's something deep in his beingness that's got to come out of there. You know, uh, in addition to that, I'd look at where you sleep to remove anything that Mm. has EMFs, radios, clock radios. If you you get an EMF meter, you'd be... You'd be scared to see what they, even when they're switched off. Really? Yeah, even when they're, when they're plugged in the wall, and there's, well, I moved, I used to have, uh, all my life I've had, str- all my dreams have always been stressful, always, not nightmares, just stressful all the time. We, remo- we removed clock radio, everything, and in fact, I didn't know, and I still don't know much about crystals, but I have two. Beautiful. Um, two amethyst crystals by the bed, Excellent. and I haven't had one, s- one single Look bad dream since nine you months You know, ago. you bring up a good point. You could use crystals. Yeah. Yeah. MS, but you could use crystals. Because crystals absorb that and neutralize it. So you could do that. Another thing you could do is philodendrons. Bring them some philodendrons in there. Because that that sucks up negative energy too. They're really good, beautiful people. And those plants give you back oxygen. So you've got a couple of things you can do with that sort of thing. The MS. Make sure also the. uh, the light bulbs that you use aren't the new yeah, mercury tank. Yeah, the mercury one because they, they, they emit a lot of EMFs too. They do. Get the old Thomas Edison's. Yeah. Uh, those are neat looking things. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, sometimes I forget all the little things because there's so much. Oh, it's never ending. You have to, it's never never ending. ending. You have to look everywhere for toxemia. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. You can't even go outside. It's just everywhere. You're under fluorescence here. Mm -hmm. We tried full spectrum. We lost, I lost the desks and everything else because full spectrum lighting deteriorates your books, deteriorates everything. I tried incandescence and the heat was so hot, our air conditioning had to run all the time. So we were like, it's been tough trying to find. I just cut a big hole in the roof. That's what you do. That's what you do. And a couple of candles. A couple of candles. First, when it rains, it might. <laughs> Let me see. Let me see what else is going on. So, eleven to one o'clock in the iris is the head area, yeah. and that that can you know I would say even inflammation in the cerebellum could spawn some bad bad dreams and stuff, but. I just get a sense this guy knows something deeper inside of him, and I, I think that the adrenal connection is there for him in that way. But all these little things you're saying, and this is true for everybody out there on the EMFs. Watch it. I'm telling you. And these power power areas, there's power stations and big power, uh, uh, you know, connects everywhere nowadays, and it's like, holy crap. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I also have really terrible vision problems from either drugs or a bicycle accident, probably both, or maybe lymphatic. Because we know his adrenals are down. That's obvious. So that means his kidneys are down. That means his lymph is up. That means his acidosis is up. And you start seeing that symptoms from that. A neurologic, a neural, a neurologist. 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 That is great. <laughs> After a week of class with you guys, I'm tongue-tied. After a neurologist uh, rang a bell in my ear and told me I'm fine, which is quackery. Rang a bell. That's uh... the bell tone for this guy. <laughs> These symptoms flare when I'm exposed to chemicals and allergies. It's all in your head, Brian. Don't you know that? I mean, didn't this neuro neurologist tell you it's all in your head? Now that's interesting. So what does that tell you? Well, he's exposed to chemicals and allergies. So we know immediately your lymph system's backed up, bro. Yep. Big time. This is big time lymphatics. My entire tongue is always. There you go. There it is. And case closed. Tongue's always white, even after years of cleansing and herbs. I think I can't heal because of the emotions. No, Brandon. Get that. Don't let your emotions power you down. You power them out. Right? You take control over your adrenals. These are glands, but they're not as powerful as you are, Brandon. So gain control that way. Don't don't be don't be the leaf in the wind. Uh, spend some time alone, get strong that way, get rid of this emotional whatever you have in you. Just don't care. Let go, let go, let go. Even if you don't know the image of it, let go. Get control of those nightmares and uh, dig deeper. You're not digging deep enough. You get into some herbs and dig deeper. Get into upper circuit and nerve. Get into your GI tract, kidneys, and adrenals. And go, 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 man. What do you think? That's what I think, too. I remember. Same one. Oh. Good. <laughs> That'll shorten the power by one. <laughs> yeah, let's see. YouTube. Okay. Enamel rapidly falling off teeth. That's not good. You know, one of the problems when you enter the zone of health, your weaknesses are going to be exposed. And we talked a lot about that at level two because that was really important to understand. And you really don't understand it until you experience it or you see it. But I'm going to tell you, classic, it's the way life is. Your weaknesses come up in your face and let you know you have them. And if you have a parathyroid weakness and you've got heavy lymph in your mouth and you have weak enamel and weak teeth, you could lose them. That's why those that have that might want to slow up a little bit in their detox. Here's the catch-22. you got a brain tumor. You can't slow up if you lose all your teeth. you just got to get it out of there. But, you know, there's that old thing. Maybe someday we'll see third sets of teeth. There has been about, I know of two or three cases of the third set of teeth. Really? Mm -hmm. This one's a weird one. Uh, one was two men sitting on a porch, and a UF, uh, UFO came down. I saw this on the TV. Came down, and this 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 ship or craft shot a light at them, and uh, it, it it made them go unconscious. And uh, out of that, he drew a third set of teeth. But there have been other cases of third sets of teeth. I find that amazing, and highly probable. If you think about this. We regrow everything. We've got spinal bifida cases where they didn't have vertebrae that grew them. 
So what's to say you can't grow a certain type of teeth? We see in third sets of tonsils. So, you know, we're, we're getting, we'll get man's genes and everything up into these higher levels. Who knows what's possible? I mean, to me, it's so exciting. It's just incredibly exciting here. But always pair a thyroid when you're losing the enamel on your teeth. Slow up, do green juices. Hit the, hit the parsley's and the dandelion greens. You know, hit all of that. Hit your pair of thyroids. Slow up. Stay away from acid fruits and stuff because you accelerate that. But I can tell you, when you have weaknesses, and this includes enamel on your teeth, because I've been on fruits for years and never problems with my enamels. But gums, lymphatics, absolutely. You know, that's... Um, so, my, my name, uh, Brianna, and I am 17 years old. 17 years old, and she's losing the enamel on her friggin' teeth. It just shows you, doesn't it? That's sad. But parathyroid, sweetheart. There's a, a formula, a glandular for parathyroid. I would take that uh, one, one, one capsule three times a day if it was me, and I would add the bones formula with it. At the same time, I'd pack up some green drinks, and, uh, and then I would do my sub-acid fruits and sweet fruits and kind of give me a happy medium here of detoxing, but at the same time trying to promote. It depends where your kidneys and adrenals are, but at 17, we know where her kidneys and adrenals are. She's lucky if she's got parents that'll pull her halfway up out of that, but, you know, so you can understand the high acidosis of this child uh, when, when, when you're that young and have these reasons. I have asked Dr. Morris questions before and every time he has been extremely helpful. I was fruititarian for over a year and when I went to my dentist for a yearly checkup, he was horrified. Most of the enamel on my teeth was completely gone. I had to get over $3,000 in work done and it was very traumatic. Oh, holy crap. You know, it would have been better to have your body rebuild that enamel, sweetheart. Your body will rebuild. It rebuilds bone and everything else. But you have to get out of the acidic medium from which you lose enamel. That's really key. And I think another thing that will help you is to wash your mouth out once in a while with baking soda. Aluminum free. By its bicarbonate. And after, especially if you're detoxing with acid fruits because of the nature of acid fruits, especially around the world. If you get acid fruits down and, and grown organically, they're not acid fruits anymore. Notice that the acid fruits feel more acid because we pick them unripe. Mm. We pick our oranges unripe. We pick our pineapples unripe. And I get sores in my mouth eating. I don't eat pineapples not in a grocery store. They got to be ripe off a plant, mm. you know, because they're so acidic. Uh, I went off most of the fruit after that for a while because the acid in it, I truly believe was rotting my teeth. However, I started to feel awful again on cooked vegan food, see? So you come down off the acid fruit to the sub-acid fruits. You don't have to change your fruit eating. You do have to change the type of fruits. Be real careful about the, the pineapples. Like I said, I don't do the, I do a lot of oranges, but they're, they're ripe and they're sweet. Uh, they're not acidic, and I love that. You can test, test your mouth saliva with a pH paper, but test it before you eat anything, and I think you're going to find you have an acid saliva already. And that means that you need to get your lymph moving in your mouth and your gums, get these lymph nodes cleaned up and moving down through here so you can get more base balance in your, just like you would anywhere else, in the liver or anywhere else. Because that, 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 that's the problem. It's not the fruit. Right. It's not the fruit. It's a, it's her, it's a baseline here. And uh, probably she's 17. So at 17, in our field, we know you have kidney and adrenals. You'd have to be a miracle baby not to be born with kidney and adrenal weaknesses in today's world. And the lymph systems in the younger people like this are not really, really that good. I mean, they're pretty bad. So, and then if she's born from a mom with parathyroid weakness, it started when she was in her mother because she didn't get the calcium she needed. So her teeth were under, everything was under. And you might find a whole skeletal system in her body that way. You know, so this started in her mom, probably. Uh, food, and now I went to go raw again. However, just a week into hitting a great fast uh, hard, my enamel on two of my teeth are already gone. Well, you know what? You're detoxing your body so fast that the enamel's weak, and I don't know what to say about it. I, I don't know what to tell you about it. I would use the bicarbonate, but grapes are very alkaline. They wouldn't take off the enamel, but they do detox. And your body lets go and discharges that weak. It sounds like you had very weak enamel on your teeth and you've been losing it. And now this just accelerated that. Because you will lose. A uh, good example is muscles. If, you, if you're a bodybuilder and you go out and build muscles with, with whey proteins and, 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 and protein powders, you're going to lose them. 
you're going to say see you later. But if you hang in there, you'll grow stronger muscles with a superior amino acids. It just I've seen this with our pro athletes all the time. But you go through a period of not so nice. And you're going to have to because you've got to regrow your enamel on your teeth. The problem with dentistry is anything they do to help you is toxic as hell. So you got to be real careful how you let a dentist help you grow enamel. A dentist, matter of fact, only nature, in my opinion, is the real regrower of, of tissue. And so this is about cells. Teeth are about cells, honey. So, uh, and matrix, but still cells. So this is about your genetics in your cells as well. So you really got to take a look at that. Uh, look at this. Also, I began uh, wetting the bed. I am so dumbfounded. That's pituitary. See, she's all up here. She's got a lot going up here in the head. Pituitary controls bedwetting. And so, this is a big deal for you, sweetheart. you got to detox the brain there. I do upper circuit brain and nerve right off. I would hit the pituitary formula with one twice a day, one bottle. Start picking some stuff up. Kick up your glands and stuff because I don't like what you're telling me here at all. There's no question about that. Uh, and I can tell you, your pituitary is going down. But you're exposing your weaknesses. And, by the way, that pituitary can sit right down on the parathyroid and not make it work. And the thyroid. So I would have to see her eyes. You probably ought to line yourself with Marcy or a practitioner here and uh, have us look at that and get you back on the right track. Because I would get into the bones for me, the parathyroid. I start working on regrowing. But to do that, just like with your case, you've got to get these acids out. You've got to get why you're losing the enamel. Can't blame the flute. A lot of people are on fruit and they don't lose their enamel. I was a fruitarian for three to five years and no loss of enamel. So I don't, you know, this is weaknesses that you will lose. You will, you will, will, will lose that. I've seen teeth, people lose, the teeth get loose. Remember that case I told you about, her teeth getting real loose? Yeah, and then they tighten up. And then they tighten right back up. But I tell these stories, some one guy there didn't like my stories, but I like stories because he's easy to see cases out of them and what we were able to do with cases. However, just a week into hitting a great, okay, that one. Also, out of nowhere, I be, okay, I am so done. I can't eat this way if it's going to affect my teeth. Don't blame you. Uh, and body like this. I might as well get dentures and get diap and wear diapers. No, 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 honey. You're going to fix this. You're only 17 years old. Uh, this is serious. You want to fix this, honey. This isn't, uh, no, 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 no. No, you, this bedwetting, this isn't about diet, this is about your weaknesses. And you, you, you have to give, you have to understand that what you're doing is uncovering early in your life some serious problems that could nip you real bad in the future. So God is, you're, you're, you're exposing your weaknesses early on in your life where you can fix them. And that is so important, you can't, I can't even overstate that. Is that that's all it's doing is exposing what's going on in your genetics and all this. You get a picture of ice, 100 bucks, you got a pituitary going on. And a transverse color, and you can keep on going with that. Remember that? So you, you want to change that attitude, Brian. I know, I know that you're freaking out with this, but you've got to turn around and realize you've got some weaknesses here that's got to strengthen up because you don't want that bed wetting and things like that. But that is part of that pituitary thing. But you also have the sphincters there that can get weak with the parathyroid weakness, so you can't hold it. Someone tickle you and you pee your pants, that's, that's parathyroid again. Weakening sphincters that open and close valves, microvalves and tricuspids that open and close gates. What is causing this and what formulas diet can I, I do to fix it? I need to know ASAP possible. I am desperate because my enamel is literally falling off and costing me thousands of dollars. Don't, I, 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 would, I would suggest that you just my suggestion, I, I don't think dentistry has the ability to, to do this for you like you need to. I think your body totally will. But I would move away from, you know, do some fruits, no question, first meal, maybe first and second. But green drinks in between and a salad at night or green drinks at night. Get more in the green drinks, again, do the pituitary formula as we suggested, maybe the parathyroid for sure, definitely kick that up in the bones formula. At the same time, sweetheart, I don't know what your blood pressure is, check all that, check your kidney and adrenals and look at your lymphatic system. You guys got anything on top of that, you think? Um, I would say just uh, just manage, manage your diet, try different things. Um, obviously going straight to fruit hasn't worked out, but you, you can get there. Certainly yeah. tried to well, what's going on with the fruit is she's exposing her weakness yeah. rapidly. So get up, get some pH papers. Yeah, you'll, you'll see, you'll see. But, yeah. but but definitely what you said about the dentist because you know like 
even maybe even more so than than, than uh, medical doctors, D dentists are very destructive because that's all they can. That's all they have. Their tools yeah. are just destructive. They yeah. drill holes and yeah. I know, and she's got to let her body rebuild this as the body's taking it down. But remember, there's only two sides of chemistry, and everything's chemistry. So from a, from a chemistry viewpoint, you say what's going on in her mouth, too acidic, obviously. All right? Is it just the fruit that's doing it? No, because grapes in particular are not acidic. Matter of fact, if you take a pH paper and, and test a, a green grape, a red grape, and a, and a, and a real a purple grape, and you'll see the sliding scale or the upward scale to alkalinity. The, the green is not as alkaline, but is alkaline. Then your reds are more alkaline and your darker, rich color, like blueberries and stuff, extremely rich alkalinity. That only helps to rebuild tissue, but it is also a detoxifier. And then when you start detoxifying at this high level, and we've talked about this high level of fruitarianism, but it is the only way you feel good. She's in a catch-22 because she doesn't feel good with the other food, which I don't either. But in this case, we've got to come back and down a little, add some green drinks, get, get this lymph. See, here's the catch-22. Her lymph is what's needed it real bad. When she slips down too far, she can't move her lymph. So, baking soda in the mouth, uh, the parathyroid and the calcium uh, uh, formula, two, three times a day on the calcium formula. You could do three, three times a day for a week or two just to get some things going. You want to get that parathyroid up and going. I have a suspicion her pituitary is sitting down on it, and she's exposing this pituitary weakness. So we need to get that handled. So I'd get on that pituitary. That should stop that. But uh, let me know, Brianna, because this is important stuff you're going through, and uh, you need some help doing it, sweetheart. I think that was another one. I think we haven't done that one. We haven't done this one? No, the one you just put, put down. Did I grab another one? Did I do it? I did, did it? Mm -hmm. Uncomfortable appetite. Mm -hmm. Uncontrollable. Oh, uncontrollable. Wow. I need to get it. It's late, right? <laughs> Is it? Okay, a minute. We'll be sitting here and everybody's going long gone. <laughs> Uh, we got about 15, 20 minutes. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, uncontrollable appetite. This is Natalie. First thing that comes to my mind before I even read is parasites. Mm. Yeah, you know? that's what it was for me. Yeah, it was parasites. Bad, bad, bad. Worms and everything like that. So you could take the, uh, just, to, just to, and of course, you know, with the uh, fungus, it's a craver of the uh, starches and cheeses and stuff. So, you know, I would take the Parasite M and G aggressively, maybe five capsules of Parasite uh, G uh, three or four times a day and, you know, maybe a dropper and a half of the Parasite M for maybe uh, about a month. and uh, A couple of weeks, or one bottle will show if you have anything because you're going to see them if you do, right? <laughs> but, uh, and if you don't see them after, after a bottle of that, you need, don't need to continue because you're going to see them by then. Uh, this is greetings and blessings, and there's another thing that can cause that too, is ulcerations. You ever notice that? You feed an ulcer, oh. but it continues to make it worse. Oh, really? Ulcers are weird like that. Sometimes ulcers, when you, when you try to fast with an ulcer, the pain is immense. Eat something, it goes away. So sometimes when you eat, an ulcer will go away, you don't even know it. At the same time, it's getting worse and worse and worse on you. And so that's, that's, that's the illusion of ulcers. My name is Natalie. I am from a small town called Alvin, just south of Houston, Texas. I've been through Alvin, Texas, my dear. I am 22 years old and suffer from uh, obesity and severe acne breakouts. Look at the acne in kids. And I look on yours, you know. And again, lymph, the lymph, the lymph. So that's all lymphatic, honey. And then the obesity here. You have two things to look at obesity. You have the adrenals. That's the number one look for me because that's your sugar metabolisms. And we're starch eaters. You want to put on weight? Eat a starch. I mean, that's all you have to do. Now, what else could cause obesity? She could have the twins. She could have the thyroid down. And the thyroid is metabolism, the rate of metabolism. So when you have a low thyroid, we call that a slow oxidizer, meaning that you digest slow. You're a slow metabolizer. A uh, hyper gives you a, you know, a fast metabolizer, so a guy can eat six, seven meals a day with a hyperthyroid. One meal a day with a hypo is all you need, and it still might be sitting there at night. Mm -hmm. So this, but if you have both of those, you can get real big. You know, your your eight, nine hundred pound people definitely twins, thyroid and, and adrenals are both down. You know, with the acne, she has kidney and adrenals right down. So you know, her adrenals are part of her obesity. 
you know she's not filtering because she's, she has breakouts in the skin, so she has lymphatic uh, problems filtering through the kidneys, but she's 22 and would have that. I've been overweight all my life. My weight fluctuates uh, a lot. I'm 225 pounds, 5 foot 3. What's the first thing that hits you with that? Quite short. Sure. Good take, David. Good take. You guys are so damn good. You guys were so good in class. I might as well not even have classes anymore. Pituitary, sweetheart. You want to check your pituitary, and that could be sitting down on your thyroid and adrenals as well. So you want to check your pituitary as well. 5-3, go to bed, a little pituitary going on. Look at your female menses and see monthly cycles and see if they're irregular or whatever. Doesn't have to be, but you can just be short from that. So you want to take a look at that, uh, growth hormones and stuff like that. I am a food addict. My God is food. I wake up thinking about food, go to sleep thinking about food. I don't want to think like this anymore. That, they, again, you got to get after the parasites in the body, and you got to get after the fungus in the body. So a good month on parasite M and G will do you loads of good. At the same time, you're going to be building up the adrenals, getting the kidneys to filter. You're going to go after your lymphatic system. Very important, but I want to go after that at pituitary, and that will also kick your thyroid up. Be very helpful. In spawning better digestion, uh, metabolism, and so this will be better for you. Uh, the when you have fungus in you, what do you crave? Starches. You crave your pastas and your breads and your cheeses and stuff like that. When I when I rid, when I clean fungus now we we you know we fill it back up probably a lot. But I remember one time when I got I know I cleaned so much fungus out of me. I never liked bread since, mm. and I never liked cheese. So I, it's just you know that's good. Now. And I take opportunity to eat everything, any chance I get when I'm not busy. Holy moly, honey. Definitely work on your adrenals and your emotions, too. You know, you really want to work there, too. I have also been suffering from mild to severe to cystic acne for 10 years. Your lymph system's a mess, sweetie. you got to get that opened up. You don't want to do this. You'll clean that right out. Get your kidneys filtering. That's the golden key here. Uh, took every pharmaceutical you can think of, from proactive to uh, monocycline uh, to Accutane. Gee, many Christmas. Oh, honey. Once the, those treat, do they still sell Accutane? Do they still uh, prescribe it? I think so. They put me on it a couple of times years ago. Yeah, because that's why old Oliver killed himself, yeah. was Accutane. Yeah. So, what, what, I mean, I can't I imagine Accutane. I thought that was off the market. No. Oh, well, those guys are bad. That's yeah, not well, off the market. Know, these guys know. are bad boys. They don't care. Well, Jesus Christ. Once these treatments were done, my acne came back with a vengeance. Of course. Yep, always. And what's that tell you? They were suppressive in nature. All they were doing was hiding your acids. Well, the problem with that is <laughs> the buildup underneath and then the blowback. Poof! Oh, crap! Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. That's why you can't suppress, you expectorate, you eliminate. You detoxify. I completely stopped taking all medications for my acne a couple of years back, and now my skin has calmed down a little. Mm -hmm. Isn't that funny? Oh, I've always thought dermatologists need to get another profession. These the, the, the skin things, these all things are not difficult. It has become mildly clear, but anything that has corn syrup or gluten has an effect on my skin dramatically. But it just still, these are just instigators, it still says your lymph is a mess underneath. Get, get, get cleaning that out. It takes a while for my acne to clear up. Uh, not to mention several scars and redness left on my face. As for my obesity, I am currently on... Fetamine. Fetamine, 15 milligrams. I never heard of fetamine. Right. Hmm. As uh, recently prescribed by my doctor. Uh, uh, let's prescribe her some herbs. It seems uh, we to can't prescribe out. anyway. I wonder what it does. I don't it know. It seems to chill me out about food. Scary. It seems to chill me out, so it must have some appetite suppressant to it, which is, means it's probably some neural suppressant. You don't want that. I don't know. This scares me. When you start suppressing stuff in the body, you want to be a big one on that. You don't suppress nothing. Because what you suppress today is your nightmare tomorrow. As you saw when you used the Accutane and other uh, uh, pharmaceuticals for skin, you saw what happened. And uh, the worst thing is that what's going on inside the body. I'm not as focused on my hunger that much any, anymore since taking uh, 
acetaminophen last week. I can eat one to two meals for the day and be satisfied. I like the control that drug gives me, but it is just what you said, drug. Get your parasites out, honey. However, I don't want to depend on a drug forever. No kidding. Did you look up the side effects of it? And are you willing to live with that? Uh, after all, this drug is an appetite suppressant. Told you. Uh, and le learning from videos, anything that suppresses is bad. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because uh, anything you suppress might not respond after you, after you take it, like a neural suppressant. You suppress the nervous system too much and you stop, you have some serious neurological uh, side effects to that. Scary stuff, you know. All right. Uh, my question is, how can I suppress or lose my appetite naturally? Again, go after health. Just change your focus to health. But, but eat, but eat, eat food. Eat, eat, eat the good stuff. Eat the raw foods. Eat all you want. Eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. But at the same time, kill parasites. Get your bowels cleaned up. In other words, start getting everything moving. Get your lymph system moving, obviously. Get your kidneys filtered. Get your adrenals up. All of that. Your emotions will get stronger. Your neurological system will get stronger. Uh, parasites will come out. The fungus will come out. All of those kind of cravings will be gone. So it, it, that's the only way to really do it, in my opinion. I want to do good to my body, and I need your help. Nat, ha happy, sweetheart. We're all happy to help you. There's no question about it. Take a picture of your eyes and take a look at that. You know? I'll save this. Well, I don't know if I want to save this. We, uh, you know, there, there's definitely uh, a lot of problems in the younger people with glands. Uh, just like the first two here, we've seen pituitary suspicion in both of them, and we've seen parathyroid suspicion in both of them. So these people with the parathyroids down, depression is coming in. Then you've got the adrenals down, so they all have anxieties or some degree of that. So now you got the twins hitting you and your happiness. You've got, you're unhappy with yourself. You've got depression from the parathyroid. Your calciums are low. That also drugs on the nervous system. Then you've got your adrenals and your emotions. So uh, people don't want to live anymore. And you've got a world that is uh, highly negative right now. Uh, criminality is high. People killed people's high. Uh, it takes strong souls to survive this and get their jobs done. So all I can recommend is get strong with yourself, spend time alone, get strong in that manner. But there are specific tissues in the body that relate to emotions and things like this. Your parathyroid glands relate directly to depressions uh, and it, it is totally related to calcium utilization. That's why you see postpartum depressions in women who have parathyroid weakness and have a lot of babies. Remember Andrea Yates. Now. The adrenals, of course, is going to give you the, uh, the emotions and stuff. When the thyroid and parathyroid's down, I've talked about this before, it affects how you feel about yourself. So when you have low thyroid and parathyroid, you, you just don't love yourself. You're not happy with yourself. You're not happy, period. Calcium is a major player in happiness, believe it or not. And in nerve responses, too. So parathyroid is a big deal here. Uh, and get the parasites out. Get the fungus out. They're depressive. Fungus is in, involved in carbon, and you probably need all the carbon you can get. So definitely want to get this out. So you want to do, just like we've been talking, it's interesting. These are kind of moving in kind of a rhythm here. We want to deparasite ourselves. We want to get our adrenals up. We want to get those kidneys filtering that sewage out of the body. Get all those acids out that irritate and break down tissues. Uh, you want to build up the glands to, to, to make your happiness come in and affect your emotions and stuff like that. It's the only thing I can tell you. Get on the raw, which is life-promoting. Cooked food is death-promoting. You can't eat death and expect life out of it. I will try to connect uh, you with him sooner rather than, oh, this is somebody, this must be a, maybe this is uh, a YouTuber that's got a case here. Uh, sooner or later, but I am not sure just how quickly I can achieve this. I will do what I can next week. Well, I don't know, please, I would announce an official trend. Well, see, I don't know what that is. No, I don't know. Yeah, that's enough. In fact, whoever's out there with depressions and suicide tendencies, from the spiritual side of it, I've been told by masters before that if one commits suicide, it's an automatically re-entry into this world again, automatic reincarnate. I don't know that that's true. Uh, I don't. I personally think that if if everything's done, you feel karmatically done. You probably could do something like that, but I, I I'm just not into doing things like that. I think that. Uh, 
uh, what it needs is strength. You need to build your strength, uh, not, not let your weaknesses consume you. Because it'll carry on with you. Remember, you're so much more than a physical body. When you pass, if you kill yourself or you, or, or you die of acidosis or whatever, you don't, just your body does. But you're still there. But you're carrying a lot with you. You're not, it, your body isn't what's aware here. Your body isn't the awareness that you're looking out these eyes from. It doesn't come from your body and nerve synapses and everything else. That is ridiculous. Consciousness is something you can't define. That is of God. You, that gives awareness. And only God has awareness. Everything else is material matter here in the physical world. Chemistry. Put together by physics. Put together by a mind with thought images. If you want to go to how the creator put together creation. And this is why we put the, 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 the rules up there to give you some indication of why you have the way you are, the way you're built. And then you, you get to understand more of who you are. Not from a religious point of view, from a, from a, a life perspective. You know, when you're thinking, are you using your brain or are you using your mind? There's a difference between brain and mind. The same thing with emotion. There's a difference between adrenal glands and your emotional body. These are differences, major differences. So it's just learning more about that, you know. But become strong. You guys that are going back, go after your health. Turn that page. Forget about those things that are depressing you and everything. Try to go after health. Grab a hold of anything you can and grab on that and try to go out for health. Grab the fruit that makes you taste good. Because let me tell you, when you eat a good tree ripe fruit, it puts a good smile on your face. I, 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 when I eat a piece of fruit that's tree ripe, I'm going like this. Every bite I'm getting a bigger smile and a bigger smile and a bigger smile. I eat a piece of meat. <laughs> good Barbie, but meat. Anybody ever taste meat without any spices or anything on it? Mm. Yuck! I mean, it's just not something you... That's for carnivores, right? Ah, that's for carnivores. <laughs> now, a cat might like that, but... An omnivore might like that, but I guarantee you, you give a sugar cube to, a, to an omnivore or a piece of meat, I'll go for the sugar cube first to get the meat. <laughs> oh, this is Q&A for Robert. Uh, this is Joseph. Thanks, Joseph. Uh, nice to talk to you here. How can you prevent uh, appendicitis? Uh, before you know it's too late, if you start to feel that, feel down here in your appendix area, start to do something right now. The thing you have to do right now is get your kidneys filtering, number one. Why? Because it's a lymph system. Even though the appendix is a lymph node area, lymph nodes can explode, can pop, can deteriorate, and become cancerous. These are tissues, but they're still of the lymph system. The appendix is of the lymphatic system of the GI tract. And that's the problem. So when you see appendix that's going, what else do you see? Malabsorption. The lymph system in the wall is real thick. And so they're not absorbing. So, this is a case here. You want to go after your lymph system throughout your body, and that includes in the wall of the gut, the colon, the small bowels, that'll pull the, the appendix clean. If you're bothered now, put some oil over here, like uh, castor oil or olive oil or some kind of oil, coconut oil, I don't care. Drive that in with a light heat source, because you don't put heat on inflammation. It makes it worse. You put cold on inflammation, and that's another thing. You could put a cold pack over that. But, be real careful what you eat. If you're already having some inflammation there, go ahead and try the paleo diet. Be prepared to go to the surgeon, though, because that's just what will happen. You do a paleo diet with appendicitis, and you're going to go have a cut out, baby, because then you don't, do, you don't do proteins with appendicitis. Why would you do them then at all? I have heard that uh, squatting instead of sitting on the toilet protects the appendix. I don't know. I've read stuff like that years ago, you know, but I don't know. I don't go outside and squat. You know, I just, uh, I've got a, a modern type toilet that's supposed to be seated properly, but I don't know. You know, I've heard things like that too, you know, and how you sit and how you defecate and everything else. But I'm going to tell you, this is totally uh, uh, lymphatic when you see the loss of the appendix. Totally lymphatic. You see it all the time. Inflammation. Uh, what about dietary factors? Big time. That's a, that's a total instigating factor of everything. Chemistry. What you eat, what you drink, what you breathe, and what you put on your skin. 
That's how you bring the world of chemistry in. So if you don't like how it's biting you, change. It's a, that's the word of the day. You know, because it is all chemistry. And uh, the chemistry man's been eating has been breaking down their bowels. So to get out of this, if you're in trouble now, use some of these, uh, these little uh, uh, quick type of uh, therapies to help you with that. But get after that bowel. Get on the stomach and bowel formula. I'll be cautious with the GI broom with appendicitis because it's so astringent. Astringents pull, but they also make, when you're in pain in an area, those astringents make you feel the pain. It's not making it worse, it's just astringing, but it's pulling on that tissue. Uh, that's about it. How can you prevent a pit? Uh, right. See, it, we, we hardly get through these, do we? Yeah. Go ahead. Our mom. Look at this, this is about their mother. Hi, Dr. Morris. Our mom has SCC of the tongue. What's SCC? Tongue as well as tongue. I never heard of SCC, but you know, a lot of these abbreviations, they're, they're like 10 abbreviations of the same thing. So I, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm going to tell you. The tongue is an extension of your GI tract. And if you're not careful and you get ulcers or pain in your stomach, it can resonate. If anybody's ever had pain in the tongue, I had a case. I thought the husband was poisoning her, to tell you the truth, and I still do. But uh, it was hard for me to get the pain out of her tongue. It was so intense. And I couldn't get her to stop the freaking coffee. But uh, with that said, you got pain in your tongue. You're going to clean that GI tract out and you're going to get that because you can get extreme pain in that tongue. And there is no fun. You know how sensitive that tongue is? You get a herpes sore on it. You see how bad that is? And you get, uh, you get, that, you get a pain in the tongue. It'll just rip you apart. So I don't know what this SCC is, as well as her lip nodes. Surgery was performed. Oh, oh. Look at that. It's sad we get these this late. They removed a third of her tongue. They removed a third of her tongue. And they reformed a radical neck resection. Poor lady. Poor lady. Didn't have to go through any of that. And that didn't fix her. Because that won't fix you. The lymph system, is that bad? It's all through the gut? What are you going to do, remove her gut? Uh, Mom uh, refused further treatment. Thank you, mother. Oh, this was their mother that went through this. It finally took her all that to refuse the further treatment. My God. And, the, and this is why I do this. Because you guys are going to help this lady like that. Look at the cases they're already helping. Worse than this. So you guys could have helped this lady right off. And let's be honest. She's in a very frail state and unable to undergo further barbaric treatments. Thank you, daughters. Thank you, daughters. We are trying alternative therapies and now using... Artemisinin. Artemisinin. I don't know what that is. I don't know, I don't know what that is. I've never heard of that either. We're, we've read that this could not be a standalone treatment, but in conjunction with detoxification, spiritual healing, nutrition. I don't know what that is. You might let us know kind of what that is. I'll have it. I'll have them. I'll have them look this up. All right. Thanks, Chris. Uh, but if you've got that kind of pain, you don't go have your tongue removed. You go detox your lymph system. Pain is an acid condition. Is it of the lymphatic system? And you got to fix it because you have you have you have you have the mother hasn't fixed anything yet. She has not fixed anything. She's just having surgeon remove tissue. That doesn't fix a thing. And she might be out of trouble with the tongue, but you know how much pain the tongue and healing and everything. I mean, this is. This, this just sends me out the world that, that we're not at a higher level on this planet. I've watched your vids on the lymphatic system and detox. She gets it. Diana gets it. And uh, have joined your website. My questions are, which of the formulas best applies for our frail 80-year-old mom? All right. First of all, get your mom at 80 years old. She's 80, which is good. Get her on raw. As much raw as you can. If you have to use some steamed vegetables at night, okay. Maybe a little salad with steamed vegetables, but you get her on the fruits and the berries and the melons in the morning and at lunch. I would get away from the acid fruits, stay sub-acid and, and, and fruit. Your melons, be careful with watermelon. Watermelon is real strong. Uh, you have to go after the GI tract. For 80, I'd get her on the 14-week protocol. I've got 100-year-olds on, on the 14-week protocol. Get her cleaned up. If you want to pump her up a little bit, get the, get the uh, superfood blend and do a, a rounded teaspoon three times a day. 
But uh, to be honest with you, detoxification isn't an intervening process. It's an enlivening process. You have more energy when you don't eat than when you eat. You have more energy on a fast than when you eat. You, you, if you notice that, go on these and see. If I'm a fasting, you can't catch me. I'm, I'm going. <laughs> so it's just that. Now, there's times, though, on these, you, you know, you're at it out, no question. But as a rule, as you get your body more and more involved, the less you eat, the more energy you have. How interesting is that? Mom experiences extremely burning off her mouth and tongue. No kidding. And they've already moved uh, two-thirds of it or whatever. What the hell? With just about everything. No kidding. But fruits are the worst. That's because they're astringent. So, you might want to do a little buffer and go to the apples. Do applesauce. Do the less astringent fruits like apples, pears, peaches, bananas, figs, dates, things like this. But you've got to use herbs. I would use the stomach tea or the hill all tea. Hold it, especially the, the hill all tea in the mouth. That would absorb into the fibers. Get that stomach cleaned up because it's, it, it can be resonating from the stomach out of the tongue. But she's highly acidic here in the mouth. Uh, what do you recommend as the diet? Any other recommendations? Well, everything's anti-inflammatory. Uh, green drinks probably would be helpful. Parsley, dandelion, uh, spinach, things like that. Uh, you might add just a twist of beet, not too much beet, but a twist of beet in there to open up the liver and kidneys. I'd get her kidneys filtering, get the GI tract, take a picture of her eyes. You all got cell phones and take a look at her eyes. There's enough information on the on these sites about your read the eyes and look at your mom's gut. Uh, she could she could have a deterioration of the stomach. So you really want to you want to look at this case a little bit deeper in that. But I would definitely get her on the 14-week protocol. What, another thing I highly recommend you do is get some aloe juice, and better yet, get some fresh aloe vera. Put your herbs in it in a shot, get a shot glass or a small glass. Put about two ounces of aloe vera juice in there or scrape the aloe in there. Add your herbs in with that and take that. Might not hurt to do a little aloe squishing in the mouth, too. Probably wouldn't hurt. And you could do some oil pulling in there. You could do because oils are anti-inflammatory. Yeah. Can you think of anything else? I was thinking of the aloe as well. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. 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 All these little things. That's the beauty of it. Nature has these mm -hmm. things for us to use. That's what I love. Mm -hmm. You know, we should be kissing nature's butt. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Is that enough? On that one? Mm -hmm. This is uh, quite a long one. Uh, we don't have a lot of time for the long ones. We'll get to them, though. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to keep recording. January, I'm going to quit seeing people pretty much. Uh, I've just been doing it all my life. I'm getting fried seeing people and doing this, too. I want to pay more attention to the YouTubers because there's just too many serious cases here. And I've got about three or four books in the, in the process now. And I've just, just, I've got them lined up and working on them a little at a time, each one, you know, and I just got to get focused. I've got, uh, I want to put out this, the Great Lymphatic System. I have a, a, a small book on it. I really want to put that out there. Uh, but the series is called, I'm putting a whole series out called The Illusion Called Diseases. The whole series is called The Illusion Called the Series. And each one will have a, a focus on the endocrine glands. One will have a focus on the lymph system. It's going to be like Don Spock's old little how-to books and stuff. But a little bit more informative than that. But I think it'll be helpful. Excellent. Small books like that. Mm -hmm. And remember, you guys write your books and we'll so help sell them for you. Oh, who's it? oh Aunt Rhea. Insomnia, frequent urination. Isn't that funny how we're having this in rhythms and rolls? Mm -hmm. And I just went through and picked this up. Mm -hmm. So we know that insomnia and frequent, we just had this frequent urination mm -hmm. thing. Now, frequent urination can obviously be prostates, weak bladders, things like that. No question about that. When your bladder's weak, you feel like you got to pee all the time. Uh, prostates are swollen, you, you, get, you get that feeling too. Uh, but you got to not forget the pituitary and the bedwetting and leaking and things like that, too. you got to consider that. So you would look at the case completely. 
You would look at the case, and like you said, the height. You'd be looking at the questionnaire and their height and everything. So when I look at a questionnaire and they send it in for a 14-week protocol, I look at their height, I look at their weight, I look at all this, all these litigating factors here that I can. They're just proof positive. So when I recommend a pituitary, I feel good that I'm, I'm that that there's enough symptoms to warrant that, and that's why I would be recommending it, or I wouldn't recommend it. But the insomnia is going to come right up here in the head in the pineal gland. So we know that chances are sinus, you know, impactions in the head, and the head, once that gets full, that's really hard to drain, isn't it? Hi, Dr. Robert Morse. Hi, my friend. Who is this? James. James. Uh, please, uh, can you help me? I love your vids. have been watching them for a while now. I really love your work. Thanks, James. Appreciate it. Love you too, man. Uh, we have a good group. We have a good group. I have had insomnia for about four years now. The are you balding? There's another look. You know, that's another thing. You're, you're losing hair. Because all these things are a sign of acidosis and uh, the body filling up with mucus. Uh, and is now progressively getting worse. In, uh, I'm really in need of help. I can't think properly in the day and have become depressed and suffer from extreme anxiety. Yeah, your glands are going down, bro. So, you, again, here's a suggestion of pituitary. All right. So just out of the, if I didn't have the eyes, I would do pituitary one bottle, one in one. That's that's my classic because you don't want to overdo the pituitary. It's a little bitty fellow, right? Uh, he's also kind of hitting about uh, depression and uh, anxiety. So we're back to the parathyroid for depression. We're at the adrenals for anxiety. Well, most people have adrenals anyway, so that's nothing new. Uh, the main problem is sleeping. I'm, w I'm waking in the night between five and twenty times. I need to urinate in the night at least four to eight times. All right. So the strong probability of, of kidneys and prostatitis uh, is there, James. I don't know if you had a PSA done recently to take a look at that. Uh, it could be pituitary, but generally, for he's, yeah, he's a male, it's probably going to be prostate. Uh, but you would look at the pituitary as well. You know, be looking at that. Uh, the only way you're going to relieve prostatitis is what? Fix the kidneys. Can't relieve the prostate. Prostate's just a victim. Mm -hmm. The kidneys are the are the causative factors. Uh, but you want to get up in here and move limp. Upper circuit brain and nerve, wouldn't you? Because he's losing memory, he's losing things. He could have high fungus. So you're always going to do parasite M. That's why I say, if you look at how we geared that 14-week protocol, we geared it for fungus, we geared it for everything. But that's the kind of rhythm you want to follow. If you're making your own herbs, look at the rhythm, how I've set that up, and follow that rhythm, and you'll like that. Uh, apart from this, I have itchy, flaky skin around my eyes. So you know he's loaded with fungus in the head. So that's, that's why you got to go back and get rid of the fungus, too. Sometimes too much fungus can make your memories go. So that's why I'm saying, uh, check that both ways. Kill the fungus and get upper circuit brain and nerve. And around my eyes and uh, like home is everywhere. He's a mess lymphatically. And you want to really clean your lymph system and that'll that'll dissolve these lipids. The but I would also go into the liver and fix the liver, clean the liver up. And the GI tract. GI tract and yeah, absolutely. GI tract and all its buds, livers and pancreases and spleens. But definitely want to do the liver gallbladder for about a month with that. Because obviously the utilization of lipids are down, is packing lipids and conglomerating liquids, uh, lipids and stuff. So again, uh, way too acidic. Definitely want to get the kidneys filtering. Blah 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 blah. Because uh, chances are you're not even absorbing your lipids. Uh, I went to a naturopath. And, uh, I hope this is good. It's not, is it? It's not. <laughs> I went to a naturopath and said I need more. Pro oh, I went to a naturopath and said I need more protein. I beg to differ with her, as this started four years ago. Also, have a live blood test. Oh, we missed a line. Did I miss a line? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I started four years ago. What would you say? Could you please give me a list of herbs, etc. I may need to take and for a long time. I'm really loving your videos. Please keep uh, doing. Oh, thanks, James. I appreciate the man. P.S. Also include my eyes if this is any help. Well, she didn't give me your eyes. Sometimes they don't. You know, we hold them if I can to read them at once. But I would like to have them so I could have looked here. You know, I'll tell her to start attaching them to these. But uh, I won't be able to give you full readings like that. But I'll be able to touch on this a little bit there. So keep doing that, and I'll tell her to start adding these uh, pictures. She's kind of saved them for when we do a big one, but well, I think you should do more protein. Oh, my God, 
Where does Nature Path get on that, that thing? They must be reading medical journals. We got to cut off here. Mineral deficiency. Let's do one more. It's hard not to, you know. <laughs> Mineral deficiency. I have been on a fruit diet for several months now, and many people told me that I would experience dental problems. At first, I did not believe them because of the faith I had in this diet to heal me, but uh, now much of my enamel is gone and my teeth are discolored with white spots. I started supplementing with liquid minerals and silica along with switching to a cooked vegan diet and my teeth color dramatically improved with no more damage. Dr. Morris, I truly believe this diet can help clean out my body, but is it ruining my teeth? How can I be a fruitarian diet without a dental disaster? We just talked about that. So go back, you're going to probably read that, my friend, uh, see that bit, part that I was talking to her about her teeth uh, first. And then uh, go on because I live on a high fruit diet, and uh, but anyway, I would uh, I would uh, do that. Look at my parathyroid. Uh, sometimes if we get too fast, too high, we just we just pop our weaknesses. The problem we have, we didn't have a lot of time to talk about that in class, but the problem we have with that is dealing with these advanced cases where, like that one girl we were talking about with the three cancers. You don't have any time to wait. You just can't carry. You just have to keep going and plow through these things. And let the enamel go and come back. You know, just like I let a teeth loosen and then get hard again. Mm. I could, you don't pull them out. You know, so you check your parathyroid glands. You, you check your mouth for acidosis. You try to, if you have to, because when the lymph system's backed up and it's backed up in people's heads and stuff, it makes your gums and everything acidic. Fruit is just, just, just astringent. But there are acid fruits, especially when they, they pick them unripe. So use your uh, baking sodas and stuff like that with the fruits. Try to get as ripe as possible fruits. And, excuse me, and watch this pH of your mouth. Uh, that's very, very important because you don't want to lose your teeth. Fruits aren't bad for you. One of our problems is it's us. It's our weaknesses. Check your parathyroid gland, though. Make sure that that's back in uh, and running up good. Check your fingernails and stuff like that to look at that. Uh, get a picture of your eye. I guess he did. We'll take a look at that. Uh, I hate to hurry you through this, but you see when I got so many things, yeah, if I take time, I don't get anybody covered. So I'm trying to not go too fast, but then at the same time trying to get to everyone because I know a lot of people are hurting. So we love you guys. I appreciate Marco, Debbie, appreciate you here. And, Thank you. Uh, you southern Londoners. <laughs> Thank you. You know London. You've got to get tropical. We wish. You guys need to go to Costa Rica. You'll be out of that chair in a couple months in Costa Rica. They're going to go that one now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get that physical therapy. Notice how that chiropractor from Canada shooted the Bowen? Addy. Addy. Addy, you're amazing. You're amazing, my dear one. They know Addy because she sat with me on some videos. That's right, I remember. Mm -hmm. Remember? She really fixed him she up is. good. Yeah. She and you, was incredible. Yeah, so you're going to have that there. That's the beauty of having a group like ours. You have the best of the best of the best because the best are their spiritual people. They're more conscious, more aware. They see more, know more, add more. And so you're going to be good. You're going to be good. Robert, thank you. No, I don't I know. I speak for everybody that came to the class. We had the, we had the best oh, time. Good. We all connected. Oh, I'm we? hoping so. I hope you guys enjoyed that because uh, there's always so much and there's always more to cover. We never have covered it all. So I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Bye-bye, everybody. You. Bye -bye. See you later. Bye-bye.